In this video, I actually want to cover what Power BI is um, with a more layman's definition and why you should learn Power BI in 2022. Break that into steps like importing data, transforming and modeling data. There's less of a learning curve and an infrastructure built for insights. And I'll go into that with some examples. So first of all, I think when you're researching Power BI or you want to move into learning and utilizing Power BI, um, you may see terms like an interactive data viz software, a suite of business intelligence reporting, um, data visualization products and services for individuals and teams or just a BI platform. And they're not entirely helpful. So more of a, a layman's approach, a definition that I've come up with could be it's a complete business intelligence tool that allows you to import data from a variety of sources, transform and shape it and visualize it for individuals or organizations to gain valuable insight. And as you can see here in the Gartner quadrant, um, one main reason to learn Power BI um, especially when you're exploring what it actually is, is that it's a, it's a world leader in business intelligence. So the tool um, has sort of superseded Tableau in a lot of regions and, and other things like Click and IBM as well. One of the first reasons you may have for learning Power BI is that importing data is very easy. Now, you would be forgiven for thinking that since this is a Microsoft product, um, obviously SQL Server, Excel, SharePoint, um, Data Marts are, are all, and Data Flows are all going to be covered. Um, but it actually, that is a huge advantage um, and something that Power BI is very strong with, but it extends well beyond that to web data sources, to uh, online data sources. You've got things like Postgres, Azure DevOps, SurveyMonkey, um, your usual sort of JSON, you've got folder structures, um, and there is there is no shortages, well over 100 connectors. Um, and that, that's only going to grow in time because you can see that some of these um, are currently um, in beta version, uh, but I imagine over time that will improve. Uh, you've also got things like Dynamics, different ERPs like SAP, inventory systems will often be held within SAP. Um, and again, back to the web, You've got Microsoft Exchange, uh, Spark, Hive, and, and really interestingly, R and Python scripts, and then back to some other um, custom data sources. One of the huge advantages of Power BI is that you can utilize Power Query, which is um, a game-changing ETL or data transformation tool. Um, you can see here in the video that I'm just shaping some data. I'm actually creating a summary table um, of a higher aggregation by customer products. Things like that are very simple to do in Power Query. Uh, you could also replicate that in SQL Server, um, and you can use the two interchangeably if you have more of a preference um, of doing things more upstream. But yeah, Power Query can also be used in Excel. So it's hugely transferable if you want to take the time to learn that. And it's a fantastic way to shape your data and maybe one core reason that you would potentially choose Power BI over something like Tableau. Um, more than that, obviously, we, we then have the use case once we've shaped our data to model it. And Power BI has a great uh, modeling interface. And obviously, you can then start to visualize your data model and the concepts around the way that your model is related or linked with other tables that you have available and you want to get insight from um, within your data source. So for someone who's not very technical, doesn't maybe have a background on keys and constraints, it's really nice to have a pretty simple user interface that people can follow, understand how their data flows, and then they can manipulate it to get correct results. Power BI definitely carries less of a learning curve than some other tools. Uh, one of the core reasons for that is it's built on a lot of fundamentals from other products. So for example, even DAX, one of Power BI's more complex um, expression languages, a lot of this is made up from um, T-SQL, uh, so SQL Server's proprietary SQL extension, Excel formulas, and C-sharp. And this has only helped with even elements of the GUI or interface, you can see the ribbon is very similar to, to what you would see in other Office products or Excel. 
So the, the amount of time required to get proficient is less. Obviously there are edge cases and there's more depth that you may want to get in. But for the average, say, business stakeholder, or in terms of self-service BI, it's easy to get to grips with um, gaining insights from your data. One of the core reasons, like we said, an infrastructure built for insights, what I mean by that, obviously, throughout the whole Microsoft and Azure ecosystem um, can be easily utilized with Power BI and its connectors. So you can see here um, where I'd, I'm just sort of uh, joining data together in SQL Server, um, looking at products that aren't discontinued. And then that means I don't actually have to do this in Power Query. Um, and I can actually import SQL views um, rather than tables that I've created upstream in SQL Server uh, to save things like uh, storage space, data redundancy. I can then say visualize my data. I've got options to export this, show it as a table, and then later on I could export this maybe to CSV for some um, business stakeholders, export elements to Excel um, from tabular data. Um, and then we can also publish this to the Power BI service and gain more insights as a team or in a self-service mature BI environment. But the life cycle is very clear, it's familiar, and it's a fantastic tool to get to grips with. As usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you.